Hey guys, today on the podcast we've got James Tuttle. He's an Australian rugby player that is currently playing over at the Melbourne Rebels and he's formerly playing at the Queensland Reds. Hope you guys enjoyed the podcast with Bobby today. What did you want to be when you were growing up? Uh, when I was growing up, uh, I think I always wanted to play rugby. Um, I didn't know if that was in league or union. Like, I really liked watching um, the Broncos, and I think they were probably the first team that I really started to follow. And I probably watched a lot more league than I did union when I was going through, um, like, primary school and high school. So Darren Lockyer, he was he was my idol growing up. Um, and we played both played six as well. So um, I think I probably, yeah... Play league would be is what I wanted to do. Um, I think union's pretty good anyway now, so um, I'm quite lucky that I'm able to to live out my childhood dream. That's for sure. Yeah. How would your oldest friend describe you? Oldest friend. Uh, I don't know who would my oldest friend be. I'm just trying to think to start. Um, I've known, so I live with Campbell Magna at the moment, um, fellow Rebels player, and I went to school with Campbell. I've known him since we were year five. Um, another one I've known for a while, Alex Murphy, plays hooker for the Reds. Um, we first played each other in grade six in rugby league match in Bundaberg. Um, so I've known him since grade six. Um, I'd like them to, I don't know, say I'm a you know, loyal friend, um, kind-hearted, um, with the right intentions. Yeah. What are you most proud of in general life and footy? Um, proud of in general life? Um, going, I think graduating from school, going to Nudgee, graduating... Um, Graduating from there, uh, and then obviously with with footy is um, yeah um, playing playing Super Rugby. I think that's been been the best achievement, um, along with a few of the rep sides, Aussie Twenties and things like that. But um, as I said, growing up and wanting to play professional sport and being able to achieve that, I think has been pretty cool. Yeah. How do you handle hard times? Because obviously you've had a couple at the moment with your two torn Achilles in a row. And yeah. you've just come back from that, ready to play first match. How have you handled that hard time? Yeah, it's been very tough, Max. Uh, we spoke about this, we've spoken about this a fair bit. Um, over the past sort of 18 months, it's been very tough. Um, I think the best way I've been able to handle it has been through communicating with people and talking talking to people as well as having a, a good structure set in place with my rehab, um, knowing what I've had to do when I've had to do it. And I think not, not looking too far ahead at the finish line, just taking, taking it day by day um, has, has enabled me to, to overcome it, I think. Yeah. Was it hard moving from Queensland to Victoria? Because you also had your injury at that time as well with the Achilles. Was it hard moving from the Reds to the Rebels? Yeah, very tough. I've been at the Reds since um, I did all my junior stuff there through high school and then in a professional capacity since since the end of 20, what was it, 2015, 20, yeah, end of 2014. So um, five or so years at that club. And yeah, it was, it was pretty tough to, um, to leave and, and move to a new state. But Melbourne's been, been very good. It's, um, for me, I'm a bit of a sports nut. So I think Melbourne's the perfect place for, for sport. There's so much on. We, we share facilities with, uh, share the field with this Melbourne Storm. Um, Melbourne Victory, the A-League side, train on the other field next to us. Melbourne Demons, AFL, train on the other field. And then where we go and do gym on the other side of the stadium at Amy Park is Collingwood. Um, and they've got their facility there. So we're surrounded by um, 
all this sport and if any time we're training, we can just look over and you, you've got a clear view of the MCG, um, Rod Laver Arena for the tennis. So it's, um, I think it's a perfect spot for me to be, yeah. So it was tough initially, but yeah, I'm really enjoying the move and enjoying being down there. You've been, have you been to the MCG yet? Yeah, I had been, oh, not since I've been living down there. Um, I'd been there, oh no, I did actually. We went to a few big bash games. We went oh, to... Yeah. Um, we went to one of the Melbourne Stars games. Um, another teammate of mine, Dane Halapetti, who you had on previously on the show. Um, yeah. He is good childhood friends with Marcus, Marcus Stoyner, So, so the Stoyner was lucky enough to uh, was grateful enough to give us um, some tickets to head to that match. Um, and I also had tickets to go to the Richmond versus Carlton game round one on Thursday night of the G, which would have attracted, I think, around 90,000. But unfortunately, with the coronavirus, um, we were unable to attend. So um, I was really looking forward to being down there for the AFL season. I would have, would have tried to get to at least a game each week um, just because they're so mad about AFL down, down in Melbourne. It's, uh, it's fantastic. You met any of the other sportsmen there? So like Storm, yeah. Haley, yeah. Yeah, so we, we see the Storm boys a fair bit because they share the field with us. So one of our teammates, Brad Wilkin, he is roommates. They live together, him and Christian Welch, the, the prop for um, for the Storm. And, and he played for the Maroons last year. He's a great guy. So he's probably one of the only Storm boys that I know um, quite well, um, just through him living with Brad. So... Um, he'd be another good another good guy to get on the podcast. I'm sure he'd he'd be more than more than happy to get on to. He's got a few good stories as well. He'd be really good to chat to. Yeah. So you played for the Reds, kind of played for the Rebels. What's the difference in training style that you've seen? Because you haven't trained much, but you've seen them. Um, it's all pretty similar, Maxie. Like yeah. I think all sporting, uh, all rugby teams normally do the same thing um it's a bit different down here in melbourne we have the luxury of it being a bit cooler so we can train um in the middle of the day rather than i uh, i have uh, memories from being up here at, at, at the reds where you, you have to train especially during pre-season early in the morning or late in the afternoon to, to beat the heat so i guess that's another luxury um but yeah as i said it's all it's all pretty similar um um, similar similar tactics, catch, pass, tackle. Yeah. Um, but it's been good. It's I think the change has been good. I've really enjoyed um, having a new stimulus of new coaching staff, new teammates, um, new locker room, um, new new way to get to training. So um, yeah, it's been it's been very good. Yeah, I was going to ask what was the experience like, but I think we covered that. What was it? Oh, how's it? How's the recovery been? Yeah, recovery's been good. It's been long, so it's been 18 months now, I think, since the yeah. first first one. So that's how long it's been since I've played a game. So I'm hanging out for some footy. Um, but the second one's been about a year. It's been over a year now since since the second rupture. So taken a bit slower and um, just made sure we've ticked every box, box off. It was quite tough transitioning down to Melbourne with, with different physio staff. I was a bit anxious about that initially, but uh, they've been they've been exceptional and they've gone above and beyond what I've needed uh, to do rehab-wise down down in Melbourne, which has been great. But yeah, the recovery is good. Um, as I said, just hanging out to play some footy again. It's been it's been too long. Yeah, you originally did it for Queensland Country in the semi, was it? Yeah, yeah, semi did down you? at Bond Uni. Yeah, did you? Instantly know you'd done it? Um, not initially. I th- I dove for a ball. So I was just standing at the back of a ruck. We were attacking about five metres out and one of the forwards went for a pick and drive. And we I dove for the ball and as I took off, it ruptured. Um, and originally it felt like someone kicked me in the back of my calf. So I, I was on the ground and looking around to see if I could see anyone from my team or the opposition team that might have kicked kicked my leg, but no one was there. So 
Um, I tried to stand up with the physio's assistance and my foot, as I stood up, my foot just flopped straight away um, and I couldn't put any weight on it without without it hurting pretty badly. So I knew something was pretty bad. And then at half time, we got it checked by the, the doctor and yeah, he was pretty certain um, that I'd ruptured, ruptured the Achilles and then had surgery the next day. So we're pretty quick turnaround and, and yeah. Yeah. You were going really well. You had the starting role as a half back down at Queensland, and then the because the sorry the country also won the final that year. That would have also been nice to see because you put hard work into that. Yeah, it was. It was quite tough, especially being in the semi final. So, um, but everything happens for a reason, and um, and yeah, it's been it's been quite a long time, but it's been good. I've grown grown a fair bit. Um, in, in this in this time, I've been been away from the game, which I think is going to be better for me when when I do return to playing again. Yeah, what's your greatest passion outside of rugby? Oh, rugby, um, sport. Yeah, I think sports massive for me. I really enjoy watching it, whether that's AFL, um, tennis. I was lucky enough to go to the Australian Open as well this year, which was great. Um, um yeah anything sport horse racing i own shares in a horse which is a bit of fun um basketball i love watching sports documentaries as well so obviously the jordan the jordan docos that's on at the moment um i really enjoyed the test on the australian cricket team that was i thought that i'm sure you've watched it as well but i thought that was one of the best sports documentaries i've seen um in a long time um, I just love seeing what other teams do behind the scenes, I guess, is something that I really take from watching those documentaries. Um, I'm studying um, at the moment as well down in, in Melbourne, and I really enjoy reading, I guess, as well. It's probably something else I do a fair bit in my spare time when I get the chance. Yeah. Unfortunately, I would. I don't have a stitch-up question today. So who's the worst teammate that you've run with through your career and why? I actually tried to get a stitch up question for you off your dad, but he hasn't texted me back yet. I'll take that. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Worst roommate. So on tour, when I was at the Reds, I usually roomed with Hamish Stewart. um, And he was a good roommate. Nothing, nothing that he did would annoy me too much. I live with Campbell Magne, the the Rebels, um, Rebel Centre at the moment down in Melbourne. He's good. Um, I think any roommate I've had that snores, so more so a prop or a front rower, is bad. Like That's hard getting to sleep when you got a guy in the bed right next to you snoring. Um, I don't know if I can narrow it down to one in particular. Mm, yeah, I think that's probably the worst trait I, I'd say. Um, anyone who snores, anyone who snores when you're trying to get to bed is pretty annoying. Yeah. What's the best word to, to describe you right now? Best word to describe me right now? Um, I'd say isolated amongst all this coronavirus. Unfortunately, everything that's happening at the moment, we're, we're quite isolated to our homes. I know you're at home doing homeschooling and um, I think that's probably the biggest one. I mean, like I just can't wait for hopefully not too far down the track to be able to get down to a coffee shop or get down to a pub and, and catch up properly with um, a few of my mates. I guess that's probably something I'm hanging out for at the moment. So I'd say yeah, isolated at the moment. Yeah. Do you know anything that's coming back with super rugby? Uh, or any inside information? No, just like <laughs> tournament wise. Um, yeah, so as I was saying, I think from what I've heard at the moment, they're hopefully trying to get us to start in July. Um, everything going to plan, that's that's the ideal start date. And we'll have a comp um, with the other Australian Super Rugby sides and the force and play each other home and away. And then I've also heard that they're planning on, after that, having the final series against some of the New Zealand Super Sides Um, That's obviously all dependent on what happens with um, border lockdowns with the going back and forth between the countries. So 
fingers crossed for us, I think the biggest thing is if we can just play against the other Super Rugby sides, play each other twice, it'd be great. Get some games on the TVs for the fans. I know they're crying out for some footy to be on. Um, so I think that's, yeah, I haven't heard anything else at the moment. We're still um, training away from the club at the moment. So, um, yeah, July is the start date we're hoping for. It's um, a bit different to the league's May 28 start date, which will be interesting to see if they can get that get that happening. So, um, yeah, I think July will be the go for a domestic comp. And then who knows what happens in the future? Who knows what the Super Rugby comp looks like next year? Because we may not be able to travel overseas by that stage. So that'll be um, interesting to see how all that unfolds. And um, no one has the answers right now, unfortunately, but um, time will time will be the biggest revealer for that. Yeah. What advice would you give a 12 year old today? I would say to a 12 year old today, um, be nice to your parents first and foremost. They do a lot, um, a lot for you guys. Um, secondly, I would say, um, enjoy every sport, not just focus on one sport. Don't just worry about only playing cricket or only playing soccer or rugby. Play everything. I know as a kid growing up, that was the biggest thing um, that helped me, I think, develop as a as a person and, and as a rugby player as well as playing, playing cricket. I played AFL, rugby league. I played volleyball, basketball. Um, play everything and I think that's that's one of the biggest things you can do as a kid and um, and also put, put a bit of time and effort into your studies as well because um, unfortunately not everyone can can do do or play sport for a living so there's got to be something and that's what I've been able to to continue doing is, is focus on my studies as well um, uh, whilst I'm still playing playing sport, but I think yeah, get out and, and enjoy every every different sport. There's plenty on offer, and I know a lot of kids are lucky enough to go to great schools that have um, sport every term. So play a sport every term uh, and get out and enjoy enjoy nature. Yeah, what are you studying at the moment? So I'm studying a bachelor of commerce um, at Deakin University. Um, in Melbourne, do it all online. So I'm a bit like you at the moment. All my study um, happens through a, a computer where I watch um, lecture recordings um, and class recordings all online. It's it's a bit tricky to get into university with um, with our schedules as, as rugby players or professional athletes. Your time's um, given pretty much 100% to, to your sport. So um, lucky enough that we're able to do online learning, which is which is great. Thanks for coming on today, Bobby. No worries, Maxi. Thanks for having me on. All good. I hope you guys enjoyed the podcast. Don't forget to like and subscribe on YouTube. Subscribe on Apple Podcasts. Thanks, guys. I'll see you in the next. They do have a timeout. Decide not to use it. Curry way downtown. Back.